Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Photo Chats with Nets. Namaste is a greeting uh, for hello in Hindi, apparently. I only know it from my yoga practice, and then I usually use it for closing. But I thought, well, why not let's use it as an opening of a show today? Maybe there are different ways of saying hello in um, different parts of India. So if you are watching from there, why don't you uh, tell me? And if you're watching from anywhere else in the world, why don't you tell me how you say hello in your own language? That would be very cool. My name is Natalie, and I'm a professional photographer based in Johannesburg, South Africa. I absolutely love photography and I'm very passionate about all kinds of different ways of sharing and photography, which is why I'm here today. And I'm super happy that you are here to join me for another episode. Today, I want to talk about printing your photographs. Now, this is a huge, vast field. And there is absolutely no way, and it's also not my intention, to cover absolutely everything about printing. Uh, there are specialists in the field in different ways of printing, and a lot uh, can be said, evening can be filled with discussions about printing. So this is definitely only for me to, you know, maybe give some inspiration, um, start a conversation, and um, get you motivated or interested in printing your own photographs. In my last episode, I talked about the importance of creating memories. So the very beginning of, you know, once you have your camera and you want to capture pictures, now we have created memories. And printing your photographs is really the natural extension from there. So I want to dive into that a little bit deeper. So first of all, I want to talk to you about what has changed in the world of printing and why this uh, would possibly matter to you. And then I share a few options that you can consider how to print your pictures. And as always, I'm going to give you a glimpse into what I will be talking about in my next episode. And to start off, and if this is the only thing that you'll stick around to watch, um, I'll share a quick video with you. And so um, please, if nothing else, um, have a listen to this because I find it's really important what I've got to share with you. I want to share something with you. When I started photography, the only way for me to see my photographs was to have them printed. And so I did. These are all my prints. When I got my first digital camera, I went on a trip to India. And when I came back, I still printed all my photographs. Here, all my prints. There is something really special about a printed photograph. It gives you something tangible and a lasting memory. And it teaches you something about your photography. You need to print your photographs. It will improve your photography. Okay, so let's um, unscramble this and let's see um, how I come to those conclusions. Uh, with um, taking a look first uh, with a very super brief summary of um, the beginnings of photography and printing. When photography first is around and we uh, print photographs, the print is really um, the only thing that you can use to share what you've captured, be it um, a memory, be it a moment in time, be it an emotion or a place or something significant um, that needed to be captured. It was always the print uh, that you had uh, to share. There was uh, nothing else available. Um, everything that came before that uh, was not suitable for uh, viewing and, and sharing with others. So the print uh, was there for a very long time. And it was then only a little bit later in the 
mid 1900s. Um, in the sorry, not 1900s, in 1935, 30, 40, that uh, the slide film came around and it was gaining popularity, um, especially in the 80s when slide shows um, became popular, so that you could do something other than using a print to share um, images and invite people to uh, view. Um, but it was still very much the print, and it was uh, very much the thing that we that we did in those days. Uh, when I traveled, uh, what I shared with you in my video is when I was uh, traveling, I always had a budget for my prints and for film. And when I came back, that is uh, what I, you know, what I did. It was my allowance. I had time for it. I had a budget for it. I would develop my film. I would print it. I would put it in albums and uh, would then share that with friends um, afterwards. If you're an 80s child, you know what I'm talking about. In today's world, when digital becomes you know, the norm, when digital is the thing of every day, we have you know, digital cameras, we have the internet, and now we take more and more pictures and we share them online. We know that every day, all the time, we get bombarded with new photographs of this and of that, and, and that really um, is revolutionary. It makes everything so much cheaper as we think and so much easier to share. And that in the first instance, we all think is wonderful and we hop um, on this bandwagon and this is where um, we find ourselves today, that we really think that the digital file that we share is the end product of our photography, that we don't take it and print it anymore. And um, yeah, I'm here to tell you that you should not be doing this. Um, well, I think so at least. Because if you look at today's world and maybe you know after the show go through your day and observe that, the images that are being shared, a lot of them are you know fleeting moments. We don't spend any time looking at them. We don't um, think that there are many photographs of great significance that are being shared um, and yeah so they don't even maybe need to be printed anyway so I want to have a look why it matters to you to print your photographs and um, you know what photographs you should print and so forth so the first important thing and I've spoken about this in previous episodes is that you want to preserve uh, what you have captured. Important moments that um, are milestones for you, maybe, uh, maybe an important trip, maybe uh, first steps of your child, maybe uh, an event, a celebration that you have captured that you want to really um, you know, preserve. We may have all experienced that some digital files um, got corrupted, that we lost images uh, through um, a failing hard drive, maybe we've lost a phone, whatever it may be, but digital is not permanent. So it is a good way to print the most significant and special memories so that you have a hard copy of them. They also make you um, experience something tangible. So tangible is, you know, this, this really emotional connection that you get with a print. You um, are much more likely to pick up, let's say, a photo book that's uh, lying on a friend's coffee table uh, when you go and visit them and flip through that book. You will, you know, definitely open it and have a look at some of the images rather than um, if there's an iPad lying on the table and maybe there are some pictures and you um, maybe not so compelled to flip through those. Just like when you share a print with someone else, they will take time and look at that print. Whereas if you, you know, have a photo on your phone and you show that to someone, they may not really engage with that. In addition, and very important for me in your process of photography is that when you decide the kind of images that you want to print, you really um, sharpen your eye for 
what it, a good photograph is and what makes um, the, a photograph a good print as opposed to another one. And it teaches you to really um, get more analytical about looking at your picture and you see what's in and what's out the frame. You see what is in focus. You see the composition. You see colors and exposure. When the print is in front of you, there is no adjusting of a screen. There's no zooming in or out. It is what it is at that point. And that teaches a lot. It teaches you, you know, really using your eyes to, to look. And it will take you further into now looking in your everyday life before you capture an image, maybe even in completely different scenarios, maybe while you're watching a movie, you can see scenes, you can see um, really composition and what makes good lighting or whatever is so significant in a specific moment. And that really uh, goes a long way in helping you to create better images in the long run. So when we come to printing, we have so many different ways available to us. There are lots of different um, options, depending on uh, the kind of scenario that we're in or, or you know, whatever um, we want to print or why we want to print. Um, I've got a few examples for you, which I think you know, are a good way to get started. First and foremost, the most the easiest and most accessible way uh, to print your photographs is through instant prints. Uh, they used to be extremely popular, um, you know, way back when in the in the 60s, um, but they're coming back. Um, the the need for printing instantly um, is growing. It's becoming very popular, and there's a good reason for that. We enjoy again this tangible experience of um, having created an image, and we you know want to you know share it right away. We want to show it to people. Maybe we want to share it with someone. Uh, for example, you know, if you travel and you meet someone who is, you know, maybe a, a real character that you would like to photograph. And, you know, if you have a print that you can share, um, it is, first of all, an icebreaker. It is someone, you know, maybe more willing now to have his photograph taken. And maybe it will also, you know, start a conversation between the two of you and will go a long way in making your photography a richer experience for, for more than one person. There are lots of um, different um, ideas and, and, and ways and brands and um, makes around um, it's not a secret that I am an ambassador for, for Instax, but, you know, that's just a disclaimer. Uh, it's beside the point. Um, I am very passionate about instant prints, and I use them for my own, um, you know, enjoyment. And I can really see the benefit that it brings to photography, whether that is in my travel photographs or um, it is for some events, celebrations, all of that you know, very easily goes a long way. A wedding photographer may use them to share a couple, you know, at the end of the day with, with the bride. And if you have ever experienced that, you will see the joy that um, comes onto uh, the people's faces when you share a photograph with them instantly. Uh, nothing beats that, I think. So definitely, you know, have a look into getting yourself an instant printer. Secondly, you can uh, go a different route um, or in addition, a route that uh, you print what we call jumbo prints. Uh, they're a bigger size print. They are available uh, all over, um, wherever, in whatever country that you're, you're watching. There will be uh, stores uh, that offer different kinds of prints. And I... Um, you know, have selected a sample here just to show you from a store here in South Africa. And um, it is um, sold in the form of uh, what they call a memory box. It could be called something completely different uh, where you're watching from. Um, they are relatively affordable. Um, like you can see in this case, um, 315 uh, South African rands equates to about um, 18 dollars 
or $19.18, Euros, somewhere around there. So it's really affordable and it is a wonderful memento to, you know, have a collection of a few images of a specific event or a celebration. Or maybe it is uh, a collection of images of someone that you want to share as a gift. It's a, a really nice way um, to share images. They, you know, come in a nice box. But like I said, there is a lot of different um, ways that this is offered uh, throughout the world. And I'm sure you can find something in your own country. Um, have a look into that. It is a wonderful way, again, to see and maybe to um, start a collection of different moments and you can have lots of memory boxes for different occasions. At the same time, if you have traveled, you, you know, had one of these bucket um, list trips that you've been on, a very special occasion has happened, or you feel the need for creating something a bit more substantial, uh, photo books are a wonderful way to do so. In my episodes last week, um, I touched on this, where I talk about um, what became of uh, my first 100 X frames, where I dive um, into much more detail into photo books, but they also come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and they are a wonderful way to create a story around um, your photographs. Lastly, and maybe, you know, to really um, consider uh, an option uh, that will really, really train your, your eye and uh, create a practice uh, for you is to, I call them deco prints, I mean any kind of enlarged print that you would put on a wall in your house. Um, a, a wonderful a memory, a scene, something uh, that is really special for you uh, that you want to um, capture for a long time. And what you may know is that it is really difficult at times to decide between the one image over another uh, and to print that. And, you know, it will train you to choose a specific image that you then have printed. So. Um, I recommend that each year you go through your images that you've taken and you select that one specific one um, that stands out for you the most and you have that printed. And you have that printed large because it will really show uh, the qualities of that image and it will really show you how good uh, the image is. And, you know, you can rotate them over a while uh, so you don't, you know, only have one image every six months you can change them around in your house. Uh, we have a couple um, that we um, swap and change from time to time. And um, it is a really wonderful way to bring uh, your photography into your house and to cherish and celebrate your achievements over time. So to you know, wrap this up again, uh, because there's a lot of information um, in here and a lot of options. Uh, that you can choose from to, you know, get into the practice of printing your photographs. Maybe you've not done this um, ever before. You, you are um, only sharing your images um, on social media. So um, go into instant prints and start, you know, lightly by um, creating a collection of prints. Um, I do that um, I also, you know, it's nice to have a print a week or um, out of a, a collection, a project that I've made, I make a contact sheet to see which ones of those I really want to enlarge later on. Um, whatever it is, get into the habit um, of starting uh, somewhere. So instant prints is a really good um, gateway to that. Um, jumbo prints is another way where you can uh, create images. Maybe you want to print... Um, also an image a week or you want to print um, one a month or, you know, every day, whatever it is, set yourself a target and then choose an image, get into the habit of selecting the images that you want to print. Um, and you will see by the end of the first year, you will have a wonderful collection that um, stands for a beautiful memories uh, from that past year. Photo books are extremely valuable if you want to tell a story 
And there are also so many different um, ways around. You can vary. Maybe you start with a small one uh, with a couple of pages first to get into the habit of it until you, um, you know, are in the practice. And then you can go um, bigger and go hardcover and create something more substantial um, in line with also then having a big enlargement uh, that you hang up in your house um, as a beautiful decorative piece. So in all of this, I hope um, that I've been able to share a little bit of the, the passion that I have for printing and, and uh, maybe have made this a little bit more accessible and hope that I've inspired you to you know, start printing um, if you are not doing that already. Um, if you have um, any questions at any point, uh, please uh, do share those with me. Um, I'd be only too happy to hear from you and engage in a conversation to take this to the next level. That was it uh, for today. In my next episode, I will share with you um, a very special journey uh, that I found myself on uh, from, you know, a little while ago, where I have started shooting straight out of camera. And I will share with you um, how it came about and, you know, up to... Um, where I am in this process today. I hope you will join me and, you know, have maybe some questions uh, so you can hop into the show and we can have a good conversation. If you haven't yet, um, you are more than welcome to subscribe to my channel and keep up with um, all the latest, uh, what I have to share and all the upcoming live streams if you um, know someone who may be interested in also sharing in this, uh, please feel free to share this link uh, with everyone and anyone. And um, yeah, invite them, the more the merrier. It will be wonderful to um, have all of you here. Next week, I will be back on Tuesday, and this time at one o'clock. I am swapping around with the times. Please be with me. On the one hand, I want to see what times are really good uh, and suitable for you guys. And I also need to dodge load shedding a little bit. So next week, um, I will be back at one o'clock. So I will hope to see you then. Until then, you have a wonderful Friday. Enjoy a beautiful weekend. Rest, go out there, take pictures, have them printed, and I will see you again next week. <laughs>